All right, here's a quick video so we can go through Trackify app, installing it, what it is and all that. The reason we use Trackify is to manage the Facebook pixel. They're very good at, they'll basically install all the different events that you need, like view content, add to cart, initiate checkout, purchase. They help you build a catalog, manage the catalog. You can add an extra pixel if you want to have a, a backup pixel storing all the data not just your main pixel in case something happens, right? And your first pixel or ad account or whatever gets disabled and it gets you know, blown up by Facebook, then you have another one as a backup. Also, one of the main reasons I chose them is because their customer service is 10X. So the guy that, uh, the owner that created this, Thomas, sometimes he'll jump into the live uh, chat support with you. He'll even sometimes jump into your store and fix things. He'll jump into business manager and help you set up or fix things. So anytime you're having pixel issues, you first thing you should do is reach out to their support, see if they can help out. So what you want to do is you want to go to the app section, and then you're going to go here and find Trackify. Obviously, this is after you install there. So you're going to go here. By the way, which level of Trackify do we recommend? Just the lowest one. The cheapest one, that's the one that you can recommend to your customer. I believe it's 29 bucks a month. So anyways, you click on here, and it's going to take you to the dashboard. So over here on your left is where your menu is, and we'll go over that in a second. But the first thing you want to do is actually log in with Facebook. Logging in with Facebook is going to be like a remote control for Trackify to be able to connect to your business manager and only to the accounts and the pixels that you've been assigned by an admin of the business managers. It's going to pull in that information here so that you can set up what you need to set up. So it's very easy. You just click on login with Facebook and you got to put in your password. Okay, good. So it's just now going to log us in. I don't want to... I already signed up with another account, so it's fine. I don't need that. There's training videos all over the place from Trackify. So if you ever get stuck on anything, you can always just watch some of their videos to, to, to figure it out. They also have this university here that pretty much answers everything for you. Now, like I said, here's the uh, live chat down here. You can always live chat with them directly. A lot of times Thomas himself, which is this guy here, the creator, will jump in and help you or one of their staff. They're really good about. It even gives you like step-by-step -step instructions on what to do here. So let's go through that now. Our ad account is going to be AWD. Our pixel should already be pulled in, you see, automatically because it's associated with this ad account. All you got to do is add the pixel. Pretty nice and easy. Step number two is we're going to need to add copy all of this text right here. And it says copy the code below and paste it into your settings. Check out additional scripts field. And so they can basically, it's just like a little piece of code so they can do all their tracking correctly. So let's go to that. You can even click the button right here and it should open it directly where you need to go to. But if it doesn't, the way you get there is just by following what they said. Settings, checkout, and then it takes you over here to the additional scripts, which I believe, yeah, we already have it. We already have it added here, but you just simply paste it in here and you're good to go. But of course, don't forget you have to save it down here. All right, so once you do that, we'll click off, we'll check off that we've done this. Okay, step number three is create a default catalog. In this case, I've already done this, but we will enter a catalog name, AWD Trackify. Okay, my business manager is gonna be AGM. My pixel is this, default Google category. This is not like super important. It, it might be if you're doing, it might be if you're doing like Google shopping and stuff like that. But let's just choose something that fits pretty well with what we're selling here, which in our case is like medical bandages and stuff like that. Medical supplies. Let's just do that. All right. Save and build catalog. And that is as easy as that. Those three steps and you're pretty much done with Trackify now. But I'll show you a couple of the things just so we have everything laid out on this video. So over here on the left is your menu. Now, uh, if you click on dashboard, you'll be able to see, you, you can see here the events that have been being tracked with Trackify. You can go down, it'll show you other event breakdowns if you want. Let's say here we want to do add to carts and you can see a graph of what that looks like. Okay, you can only do it by one. Yeah, you can only do it by one day. We, you can't do like a, a date range. That's fine. What else do we have to do about this? So I think that's about it there. Now, if we go to the pixel engine section, it'll just show you what pixel is connected to here. Here's something important. This server side API, I like to have that checked off. What does that mean? It says server 
server-side purchase events will send order information directly to Facebook. They are used to fill in any purchase events that may have been missed or suppressed in the browser. As Apple is coming up with uh, with an update where they're, it's making it harder and harder to track some of this stuff. And it just happens sometimes that whatever for whatever reason, the browser didn't report back to Facebook. So this should help pick up some of those things. We're going to go ahead and update it. And then we can close. OK, good. There it is. If you see this in green, that means it's working. So we're good there. On the analytics side, you can break it down by reports on products or collections, UTM parameters, anything like that. If you want to look at it by date range and all that, it breaks it down pretty cool for you. OK, audience manager. The audience manager is pretty cool. You can make a custom audience, and I know you could do this with the business manager, but check this out. You can actually make it sometimes pretty fast here. We'll say maybe Trackify just to make it stand out for whatever. Okay, we're going to select our ad account. Should pull in our Fixel. It does. Okay, we're going to do it on event-based, and the type of event I want is the add to cart. I'm going to include basically any add to carts. Now, here's a cool little feature. If you want to do more than one add to cart date or look back period, it lets you do that simultaneously. So you don't have to do it one by one like we do in the business manager. So like in this case, let's say I want to do a seven day, 30 day, and 180 day. That's the default here. That's fine. Why do you want something like 180 days? Because you want to collect as much data as you can so that you can make a good look-alike audience from this. So let's say create custom audience, and we have an error here. Uh, I think it's probably because <laughs> this is so new that we don't have enough add to cards. Definitely not 180 days or 30 days, and we just got started yesterday. So I think that's what it is. So let's move on to the next section, which is a lookalike audience. Uh, this is really cool as well because the same idea where you can do a audience, let's say your add to cart audience, and you want to do multiple countries, which we usually don't do. But let's say uh, you do, you can choose that here. So it just makes it really cool. But the best feature, I think, is, again, it saves you time by creating audiences, 1%, 2%, 3%, 5%. And guess what? It also even lets you make bigger audiences up to 20%. You can't do that with Facebook. So that's a really cool feature, especially when you're trying to scale. You want bigger audiences, but you want them to look alike, your purchases. This right here is a secret weapon that we can use, all right? Catalog manager. So on your catalog, we already built the catalog on the first step when we did the welcome steps here. In this particular case, it's pulling up all my catalogs that, that have been assigned to me. So you won't see as many here as me. And there it is. That's the one that we had created before. So if you want to edit some settings, okay, create product sets. This is pretty cool. If let's say somebody sells products that are for adrenals, products that are for sleep, products that are like keto kit, products that are for, I don't know, let's just say for girls, one for women, one for men, one for dogs, one whatever. You can create little sets that will then allow you to make uh, better dynamic product ads. So you can do that with this here as well. All right, settings. This has all been checked off. I forget though if it was by default like this or not, but these are the settings that we like to use, especially this advanced matching is when it's enabled, the pixel events contain personal user information. When available, that allows Facebook to identify Facebook users that are not logged in at the time of the event. Meaning if they can track me by uh, phone number or my address or my whatever, even if I'm not logged into Facebook, but I make a purchase, it will track that and it could be used for better lookalikes. It can be used for better tracking, just everything, but it has to be checked off. By default, it usually is not. So this thing helps us out with that. Value reporting, I don't know. This is just something, I always leave it at 100%, but they say that sometimes if you're reporting too much value to Facebook, they could charge you potentially a little bit more because they see that you can afford it whatever that he just added this in there as a uh, feature if people want to report just 10 percent of the actual value and supposedly it face it forces facebook to find you better roas because it's not reporting as good whatever we don't mess with that but just wanted to let you know what that is okay initiate checkout on button click this is actually pretty pretty important the initiate checkout event fires by default when we have uh, this on position on button clicks that lead to the checkout page, switching the, pre the preference to fires them on the checkout page load. We don't want that. We actually want to track more events 
to help our pixel learn faster. So we want this to be on. Again, like I said, I don't remember if it's on or off by default, but all these settings here, that's how we want it set up, okay? And lastly, I'll go over the integrations. The one that we use this for is mostly for one-click upsell Zipify pages. What you wanna do is you wanna copy this and you wanna put it into your online store preferences. Like it says right here, copy the code below, paste it into the additional Google Analytics scripts field in your shop preferences. This particular shop does not have OCU yet i believe let's see yeah we just have simplify pages but not one click upsell so i'm not gonna i'm not gonna even go through that but like it's pretty self-explanatory you do this you copy it you click here and then you paste it where you're supposed to paste it. So that's it for, for Zipify pages, I believe. Let me just see if there's anything else missing here. Let me see if we can add an email. I would like to be notified. Yes. All right, so that's it with that, guys. Let me know if you have any questions.